Lesson 3, Unit 4, the Project Management Plan. An important element of the planning phase is the development of the Project Management Plan. This is the plan that will help manage the schedule, budget risks, the project team, relationship with key stakeholders, and manage the communications to make sure the right information gets to the right people at the right time. Depending on the level of complexity of a project, this plan can include areas such as procurement, logistics, security, and quality. Schedule is an important element of the project. It's not only used to track the progress of the project over time, but it helps identify opportunities to improve the efficiency of the project. The schedule will help monitor changes between the plan and the actual performance of the project. The plan identifies the dependencies among the different activities and even external dependencies. A tool used to plan and manage the schedule is the Gantt chart. The Gantt chart lists all the project activities and groups them by output and outcome. The chart shows horizontal bars that describe the duration of each activity, the start and end time, and the sequence and dependencies among the activities. This tool facilitates the visualization of the project and helps identify progress. During the implementation phase, the project team will update the progress made on each activity and the tool will diagram the progress on the horizontal bars. For example, the chart shows a red line to indicate the current time of the analysis. To the left of the line, the activities that are not fully marked in black are activities with delays. That means that it will take more time for those activities to show as completed. The chart makes it easy for the project manager to identify problems and make the corrective actions as needed. The chart is also a good communication tool used to report the progress of the project and help key stakeholders understand the project. The project budget also needs a plan. The plan will identify all the project implementation activities and their corresponding cost. During this exercise, the team will review the original estimates and assumptions. It's important to complete the review and ensure all the estimates are correct and the plan is not missing anything important, such as the cost for all the monitoring activities, the estimates for human resource costs including benefits, and a review of all the donor requirements to ensure the project is in compliance. The plan will include information on how to manage and make changes to the budget and the approach to monitor closely any deviation from the plan. The project manager can use a simple S-curve diagram that plots the information of the project cost over time and uses it as a baseline to track actual budget performance. A simple tool to monitor a budget is a spreadsheet that lists all the project activities and columns for each month for the duration of the project. For each activity, the spreadsheet will identify the total cost. It looks like a Gantt chart, but in this case, it helps track how the project is spending its financial resources over time. This is a good tool to track the differences between what was planned and the actual cost. The project manager can easily identify any deviations and take the corrective action before it's too late. Risk and assumptions are also an important element in the project management plan. The plan will identify the risk, develop responses, and assign responsibilities for all critical risks in the project. The plan will be used to monitor any changes in the risk or if there are any new risks in the project. The use of a simple matrix can help in the identification and monitoring of all risks in the project. Each risk is quantified by the levels of probability and impact of the project. The risk index is a simple multiplication of the probability and impact values. For example, a high level impact and high level probability will give a risk index of 9. A low impact and a low probability will give a risk index of 1. With the risk index, the team can then identify those high index risks that need immediate action and plan specific responses and strategies to avoid the risk or reduce its impact in the project. In the case of the low index risk, the project team only needs to monitor the risk over time in case there are any changes. This risk management matrix needs to be updated on a regular basis since the probability of a risk tends to change over time. 
Another important project management plan is the team management plan. This plan is exclusively used by the project manager to develop the team and build their skills to respond to the needs of the project. In the plan, the project manager will identify all the tasks and the type of skills that are needed in order to accomplish those activities. The project manager will assess the skills of the project team. The assessment will identify if the team has the skills, knowledge, and experience to do the job. This information is useful in order to assign specific roles and responsibilities for everyone in the team. If the skills are not present, the project manager will develop a plan to fill the gap skills. A useful tool to assign team responsibilities in the project is the racing matrix. In this example, the matrix lists all the activities that are in the project and a short description of the activities. In the next columns, all team members are identified and their roles in the project are defined as either responsible, accountable, consulted, or informed. Some rules when using this chart. There is only one person with a responsible role per activity. Only one person as accountable per activity, but there can be many people that are consulted and informed. This matrix helps the team understand the roles and responsibilities in the project and avoid duplication of efforts and conflicts caused by unclear roles. Managing relationships with the stakeholders also requires careful planning. The project manager needs to monitor the levels of support and interest, as they also change over time. The objective of the plan is to identify opportunities to sustain, increase, and build commitment and interest in the project. The plan will include the strategies to communicate with stakeholders and manage the relationships based on their levels of interest and influence. A tool used to identify and classify stakeholders is the stakeholder matrix. The matrix identifies the stakeholders based on their level of interest and their level of influence. A stakeholder with a high level of influence and a high level of interest will be in group A, for example, the project owner. A stakeholder with high levels of influence but low level of interest will be in the B group. A stakeholder with high interest but low influence will be in group C. And finally, group D is for those stakeholders with low influence and low interest. Here is another matrix that can be used to manage stakeholders. Stakeholders might have interest in different areas of the project. They might have a specific interest on a specific outcome of the project. For example, the donor is interested in every outcome of the project. But other stakeholders may only be interested in some of the outcomes. Use of this information will help customize the message to communicate with them. By detailing the content type of the message based on their areas of interest, stakeholders will be more interested in receiving the messages from the project. The communication plan is another important plan in the project. Each stakeholder has a different need for information from the project, and the communication plan helps organize these needs, including the format and the frequency of information each stakeholder wants to receive from the project. For example, the donor has a requirement to receive project reports on a quarterly basis. The plan will capture this requirement to ensure the project team delivers the report on time. The communication plan will include a simple matrix for different types of communications. The first column identifies the type of communication. The next, the purpose of the communication. The next column is the methods for delivering the communication. The next is the format and the frequency of the communication. The next column identifies the recipient of the communication and the last column identifies the person responsible for preparing and sending the communication. Once a team completes the development of the management plans, they need to be integrated with the monitoring and evaluation plan in order to ensure that the activities of both plans are done in a coordinated fashion. Failure to do so might result in plans that are being implemented at different times and provide information that will be difficult to reconcile. It is a responsibility of the project manager to make sure that the integration of all project plans happen before the implementation phase.